In this episode, I'm going to cover the Windows install for Flutter, and this is part 3. I'll start off by installing IntelliJ IDEA, then I'll install the Flutter plugin into IntelliJ, and after that I'll create and debug a Flutter application. So to get going, I'm going to go to the Flutter I.O. website, IDE Setup Guide. And in this guide, there's three IDEs that you can install at this time. And I'm going to choose the IntelliJ IDEA Community Edition, so I'm going to click on that link. Once I arrive on IntelliJ site, I'm going to look for the Community Edition download link, and I'm going to click on that. This will take a moment to download. IntelliJ IDEA is downloaded now, so I'm going to click on Execute, and in Chrome it's at the bottom, so I'm going to go ahead and click the shortcut in Chrome. You can go to the File Manager if you don't see that. Okay, it wants me to allow the install, so I'm going to click Yes. The wizard comes up and I'm going to go through next and I typically install with all the defaults so I'm going to click next on all the default settings and I want the 64-bit launcher so I'm going to click that and I'm not going to associate any extensions at this time I can come back to that later so I'm going to click next and I'll keep it JetBrains install and I'm going to show details to see what's going on and this will take a few moments to install. All right, so the IntelliJ IDEA has finished extracting itself onto my desktop, so I'm going to go ahead and click on Run and Finish. So once this wizard closes, it will load up IntelliJ IDEA. So I don't have anything to import from a previous install, so I'm going to click OK. I'm going to accept the license. And it wants to ask me about the default plugins to start with. And what I like to do is keep the defaults and then come back and install extra plugins if I need them. So I'm going to go through Next and Next on the Featured Plugins. And I'm going to click Start using IntelliJ. And by the way, you can come back and enable and disable plugins, and I'll show that process when I install the Flutter plugin. So I'm going to click on Start Using IntelliJ IDEA. So I'm going to minimize the background here. So now that I have the IntelliJ installed and up and running, I'm going to go down to Configure, and I want to click on the Plugins options. So I'm going to click on Plugins, and what I want to do, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger for this tutorial and I want to search for Flutter. And you can see that if Flutter was installed, it would show an option or item in the list, but instead I need to go to Browse Repositories. And I'm going to click on the Browse Repositories button. Okay, so it instantly takes me to the Flutter plugin once I go up to Browse Repositories. And here we have Flutter version 12.1. Uh, so in the future, it's going to be greater, of course, but the same process will, will fall along. So once I'm there, I'm going to click on the Install button on the top right. And I'm going to say Yes to proceed. Okay, so now it's installed. I want to restart IntelliJ so I have those features enabled. So I'm going to click on Restart. Okay, so IntelliJ IDEA now has the Flutter plugin. I'm ready to create a Flutter application, so I'm going to show you show how I do that. So I'm going to create a new project. Once a new project comes up, it wants me to select an SDK, and I won't do that at this time because I'm after Flutter. So I'm going to select Flutter. And before I start, I have to select a Flutter SDK path, and that will be the path that I installed on in the first video. So I'm going to click on the Explore button, and that would be in C Users, and my user, and I put it in the Git directory, so I'm going to scroll down, and there's Git, and there's Flutter. So I'm going to select the Flutter. If you installed it in another location, go ahead and select that folder. So I'm going to click OK, and there's no warning, so that's a good sign. So I'm going to click Next. So here's where it asks me for my project name. So I'm going to name it my Flutter Sandbox. I like a sandbox to play in to test out the features. And if I click on more settings, it just gives me some options of what to name and where to put the files. So I'm going to click Finish when I'm done with that. Now the project is booting up. I'm going to go ahead and enlarge the window and close the default tip. It 
It takes a moment to bootstrap the project and initially set it up. By the way, down at the lower right, it asks you if you want to submit uh, anonymous statistics. And I say sounds good because I like throwing fuel on the fire for the Flutter devs. Okay, so the project is booted up and ready to go. So it is initialized. So let's just take a look at the package structure. I have my Flutter sandbox on the left and we have Android, iOS, and I'm not gonna cover all these features, except to mention that the source code is gonna go into main.dart. And this is the first file that gets open, which is the library, the instantiation and bootstrapping starts here at the main method. And there's a variety of classes that could be in this library. So to get going, let's check out pubsec.yaml before we start. So it's been a couple days since I've installed Flutter. So the best thing to do before you get going is run the Flutter upgrade because it's a fast moving project and new features and behavior enhancements happen every day. So let's click on Flutter upgrade on the top right. There's some links and there's Flutter doctor. So I'm going to click on Flutter Upgrade, which will upgrade the project. As you can see in the console, it's doing an update. And there it is. It's grabbing the latest Flutter update and doing some upgrades. Oh, it looks like we have a new Dart SDK download. So this is fantastic. All in the Flutter Upgrade. I don't have to do anything manually. Okay, so the Flutter Upgrade has finished. It ran the Flutter Doctor at the end, which you can run at the top right link here. And the Flutter Doctor and now makes an analysis of the Flutter features that should be installed. For instance, Flutter is set up for Windows. It has executable com compatibility. The Android tool chain has been installed. Android Studio, IntelliJ. And if you look down, we don't have any connected devices yet. And that will be the next activity we will do to get up and running a uh, debugger for this session. So once we have the app set up, which we now have, we've upgraded Flutter, which I check on a daily basis because Flutter is a fast moving project. I can go back to my main.dart and change code, but to be able to see the change code changes, I want to be able to run that on a emulated device or my physical device like my phone, my Nexus 6. So to get up that device, we could go to the terminal and start the emulator with a quick command, but I won't show this in this video. I'll follow up with an episode on that shortcut. But to get going in the previous episode on how to install Android Studio, I showed how to boot up the emulator. So I'm gonna do that for this episode. So I'm gonna go down to Cortana and ask, hey, start up my Android Studio by typing in Android and it brings up a suggestion and I'm gonna click on that. This should load up my last project. If it doesn't, I load up my last sandbox project because I want to get to the AVD manager. I suspect in the future there'll be a quick link to do this in the IDE. But until then, this is one way to start up the emulators or one of the emulators. Okay, so Android is booting up and I don't really need it to finish doing its, all its goodies. I'm after the AVD manager. So I'm going to go up to the top here. There's a phone with an Android head. If I hold still, it'll say AVD Manager. I'm going to click on that. Once the AVD Manager is up, I'm going to select the device I created, and I could have several of them to test debugging on different devices. And I'm going to click on the Launch button on the right, which looks like a Play button. Once the emulator is up and running, I can close down Android Studio in this case. One of the benefits of not having to start Android Studio would be to start the emulator for the command prompt but I'm not gonna show that in this episode. So I'm gonna close down Android Studio, exit. While the emulator boots up, I'm gonna resize the windows here a bit. Okay, you see that it's booting up and the IDE detected it and added it to the launch menu at the top of the Flutter IDE or the IntelliJ IDEA with the Flutter plugin. After I try to run the Android emulator in my Parallels VM, it won't work. So I'm not going to try anymore. I'm going to switch to the Mac context. And from the Mac context, we can do everything that we can do in Windows at this point in the ballgame. So I'm going to go ahead and close down my emulator for the Mac and move to Flutter app on my Mac installation. So let's do that. I'm going to close it. Okay, here we are. Here's the same exact context. I've got my Flutter app sandbox 
my Android emulator running because it boots up, the VM doesn't have a problem running in the native context. And I'm going to go ahead and go up to the debug icon and launch it. So it'll take a moment to launch and install the app and create the debugger process. Okay, so the app loaded up. That was pretty slick. So let me change something and hit hot reload and see how fast that is. So I'm going to change the title and add some characters to it and hit hot reload at the top. And there we go. That was faster than the, my eye could see. So this concludes installing IntelliJ and the Flutter plugin. Thanks for watching today. Follow me for more tips and tricks on Flutter and I'll catch you later.